Okay, so we also have a few other hormones that you guys should be comfortable with. But the ones that we just discussed right now, they're known as tropic hormones. That means that that like thyroid stimulating hormone doesn't do anything on its own, but it stimulates the thyroid gland to do its thing. Same thing with ACTH, adrenal corticotropic hormone. That one doesn't do anything on its own, but it tells our adrenal glands to release or decrease the production of their own respective hormones. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we also have something called prolactin. What does prolactin do? Pro is in favor of lactin, lactation. So this prepares the mammary glands and the pregnant woman so they can start developing milk. Make sense, guys? Okay. We also have um, gonadal tropic hormone. What are the gonads? That's right, your testes and your ovaries. So the gonadal tropic hormones release either follicle stimulating hormone or luteinizing hormone. Ladies, you need to be familiar with these, especially for the, um, the menstrual cycle. But in a nutshell, remember this. Follicle stimulating hormone, it's, stimu it's the hormone that stimulates the follicle. And when we talk about follicle, we're talking about your ovum, your egg, or for men, our sperm. This is the hormone that creates the cell division that's gonna help produce the sperm or the egg in women. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But luteinizing hormone is for maturation. The reason why I'm emphasizing the woman's cycle is because men produce sperm, sperm every day, all day. Several hundred thousands of times throughout the day, right? But ladies, you guys only produce one ovum every 28 days, mm -hmm. according to theory. So you're gonna have, like your follicle stimulant hormone goes up, and then when, um, when you're going through, like you're, um, you're producing your ovum, right? During your menstrual cycle, during your ovulation period, right? But when you ovulate, that means that the egg is mature and ready, and that's what this hormone is supposed to do. So that's when you'll see the, lap, the LH go really high during the moment of ovulation. Does that make sense, guys? So remember, this is for the creation of the egg or the sperm, and this is the maturation. They also control, control your men and your, um, your testosterone and your estrogen and progesterone, okay? Keep in mind that the target organs for GTH, for gonadotropic hormone, is the testes in men and the ovaries in women. You all go with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. You also have another hormone. We have something called growth hormone. Now, growth hormone helps you do what? Growth. It helps you grow, right? I want you guys to pay attention to this. Imagine the bones, right? I want you guys to know that growth hormone usually affects or stimulates the epiphyses of the bones, the epiphyseal growth plates. That's where the bones are actually receiving the growth hormone and that's where they're growing from. But when do we stop growing? 18, 18 19, 20. So when, we, when we're done with puberty, correct? There's two conditions we're gonna be discussing regarding growth hormone. It's either gonna be called gigantism or something called acromegaly. And gigantism, they get super tall, like up to nine feet. But that's because the excessive growth hormone is being released in an excessive amount when the epiphyseal plates are still open for growth, meaning that it happens before adulthood. Does that make sense? But then you have another condition called acromegaly. And acromegaly, acro is talking about the hands and feet. Megaly is big, right? Mm -hmm. This was when you have an excessive amount of growth hormone, but it happens after puberty is over, in adulthood. That means that these patients don't get tall this way. Their hands get bigger, their feet get bigger, their viscera, the organs get bigger, their facial features get bigger, and their skull becomes more robust and, 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 and stuff like that, right? But they don't get taller in this fashion. Does that make sense, guys? So you're, you're going to have to be able to differentiate between acromegaly and gigantism. You all with me on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the gigantic is just the height and then acro is like the giant. Hands and feet. Yes, 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 yes. Both of them, though, will have issues with like stability because it grows really fast. The muscles and nerves can't, can't uh, keep up and they become very uh, at risk, at high risk for, for falls and fractures. Okay. And we'll discuss those again in more detail as well. Uh, let's see. Is that all the hormones? I believe so. Now, that was part of the anterior pituitary gland, the front part. There's another part. There's a posterior. But the posterior part only produces two hormones. Oxytocin, which helps your uterus contract, okay? 
It also helps eject breast milk. Have you guys ever heard of the letdown reflex? Okay, well she has. The letdown reflex is, if you can imagine, when a baby is born, what's the first thing that they have you do with the baby as soon as we've ensured airway is uh Yeah, so you have like, let's say you have the breast, right? And so I don't know how to draw this, but let me see what I So you have the baby's mouth right here's the chin. Does it look okay? <laughs> Not bad. So my point is, the baby's suckling on the nipple, right? So the nipple stimulation sends a signal to the posterior pituitary gland. In response to that, it releases oxytocin. Now remember, in this scenario, the mom just gave birth. What's happening to the inside of her uterus? Well, it's supposed to be contracted, but what's happening when the baby comes out, the placenta gets ripped off? What, what's happening? They're bleeding. They're bleeding. Oxytocin contracts the uterus, it stops the bleeding, and it helps eject breast milk, which helps the baby feed, and hopefully it'll, it'll make the latching process a lot more easy. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's called the letdown reflex, the cycle. That's why as soon as we secure airway, we dry off the baby and we warm them up, we do skin-to-skin -skin contact and help them suckle on that nipple if they're going to choose to breastfeed. Make sense? Mm -hmm. The other hormone that we have, and I'm gonna keep that drawing there because I just really, that baby's on point. No, I don't have to do it actually, I'm sorry. <laughs> the other one is called anti-diuretic hormone. This is the last hormone we'll talk about. ADH, you guys need to know what this does. This is called anti-diuretic hormone. It's a decreasing in urine production. That's what this hormone does. It reduces urine production. It's a negative effect hormone. I call it the don't P hormone. Because the more ADH you have, the less urine output you have. Does that make sense? This hormone only moves water around. It does not move salt around. So there's this whole idea that wherever salt goes, water follows, right? Where With this hormone, wherever water goes, the salt stays in. If the water is coming, the salt still stays in. But it can become concentrated and diluted. Just because the water is the one that's moving. Does that make sense, guys? There's two conditions we'll be discussing. We have diabetes insipidus. Even though this has nothing to do with blood sugar levels, this has to do with ADH secretion. You can use a terminology to help you figure out what it's for. The word diabetes should remind you of polyuria, because that's one of the three P's when somebody has diabetes mellitus, the blood sugar issue. Again, diabetes insipidus has nothing to do with blood sugar issues. But we know that diabetes reminds us of polyuria, well, this is the one that has polyuria. Normally, we pee two liters a day. This patient with uh, diabetes insipidus, they're peeing 18 liters a day, okay? And you should be, it should be noted that whatever the urine output is, in this case it's high, the ADH value will be the opposite. It will be low. So that lets you at least know what your medical intervention will be. ADH is also known as vasopressin. FYI, you guys should know that, okay? DDAVP. We have that condition when we have uh, an, ex uh, an insufficient amount of ADH, urine is very output, uh, very high in its output. Then we have syndrome of inappropriate anti-diuretic hormone. It will be the opposite of this. So what happens to the urine output with this one? Increases. It decreases. What happens to the ADH value? Increases. It increases. So that's how you're gonna be memorizing these two different disorders, and we'll elaborate more on the manifestations when we get there. Um, make sure that you guys really remember your aldosterone, your cortisol, what they do, your tropic hormones, in particular your ACTH and your TSH. Once you guys know those hormones, everything becomes a lot easier. There's one more hormone that I forgot to mention. In the thyroid gland, we have also something called calcitonin. Now, do you guys know what parathyroid hormone does to calcium? Mm -hmm. What does it do? Increases. Okay, so yes, but since you guys don't remember that, well, just remember this. Do you guys speak Spanish? Yeah. What are calzones? <laughs> Underwear. What do we do with calzones? We, <laughs> we take them off, right? So calcitonin, it pushes calcium levels down. Like you take down your calzones, right? And parathyroid hormone, the other one that we discussed in the beginning, it increases calcium levels. So that's how you're going to memorize whether they bring the calcium up or down. Does that make sense, folks? Yeah. If calcitonin goes down, where is that calcium going to? Where are we storing it? Mm -hmm. That's right, inside the bones. Mm -hmm. And so the bones become very dense. As opposed to parathyroid hormone, it increases blood calcium levels, 
It pulls it from the bones and it makes the bones more brittle. Maybe. It could also cause uh, uh, urolithiasis, cal uh, urinary stones, because if you have too much calcium in the blood, more is being filtered by the kidneys, hence more stone formation potential. Make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. All right, that's it.